Today I'm out in the shop and we're working on Whirligig wings. So when you glue these on, often guys will take a little nail and put it in through the hub and into the wooden piece of the wing. Now what this does is when the Whirligig's out there in the weather, and getting hot and getting cold, getting wet and then drying in the sun, the wood changes uh, shape and density and shrinks and expands and quite often even though you have a very good glue in here, the wing will come loose. So you want it to last as long as possible. So a lot of commercial whirly gigs, they just drive a, they drive a, a brad in there with a nail gun. Boom. Well, the brads are usually steel, and steel and wood, as the steel begins to rust and the moisture in the wood, then it causes the wood around it to rot and deteriorate. So it makes a problem over time, makes it worse. So what I like to do is use a similar type of wood. I use wooden dowels, and I glue them in. And a little trick I have is to only drill the hole halfway through so that it engages the blade and doesn't pop out the other side. This helps seal it from moisture and make it last uh, that much longer. And it looks a little neater. So that's why it looks like you only have one uh, pin here, but you really have one on each side and they're opposite sides for the opposite wings. So just a little trick, I'll show you how I do this. So over here at the drill press, this is a central machinery from Harbor Freight drill press. Not the best, but it's adequate. It's great for making whirly gigs, you know, it's adequate. It does everything I need it to do. You can adjust the speed of the drill with the uh, belts here. Anyway, I've got a 3 16 drill bit. I've got 3 16 uh, dowel. I think I got this at like, uh, you know, Michael's Hobby Store. I'll put a link uh, below where you can get these dowels, and they're pretty cheap. They come in three foot links. What I do is drill the hole here. I have it on a little stand because it, it won't lay flat with the wings here. I drill these holes only after the glue of the wings has already dried. So these wings are, you know, they're in there good, but I want them to last a long time outdoors in the weather. So what I'll do is put this on a, a stand, and this little stand is just, all it is is a hub, a blank hub that, you know, didn't work out or whatever. It's an old hub. So it, it makes it stand up just the right amount. See here? And then I turn this around where I can see the blade going through the wood and turn, turn the spindle down, rotate the spindle till it's at it, till it's just about like a quarter inch from the bottom. I don't want it to go through. And then I come up here, see how that stops? Now this particular drill press, most drill presses do, have some sort of a stop set. So you can stop the drill from going too deep and you can do a, you know you can do I've got two sets of wings which is uh, four wings and eight holes so I have the stop set so I can you know I can do those repeatedly without having to worry about it now, if you didn't have a stop uh, just get you a little piece of tape and put a tape hold it down like this and put tape right around let me go ahead and show you that it's just a little piece of tape you could do this with a magic marker Put the tape right there so you know when to stop. It's not it's not real critical, you know. If you if, if you cut these off, cut your dowels off a little longer, then you can come in with a uh, exacto or zona saw and just you know even them off. But you know why why do the extra work? So here's how I save time and work in the shop. So I I drill these holes. Go ahead and drill one to show you. 
And you know, I get them in the center uh, of my eyeball. It's not very well. Now, so that you don't waste uh, dowels and material, I like to take, this is a digital, digital calipers, or any kind of calipers will work. I, from eye gauging, easy cal from Algate, easy cal from eye gauging. And the beauty part about these is, you know, it's pretty darn accurate. Some of the ones I bought from Harbor Freight for like 19 bucks, they just aren't really that good. You see how big those digital letters are? That's just wonderful. And you can change this from millimeters to half inch, 27 16 15 64 something. Some of the old plans I use, there's quarter inch. You see that one, one quarter there? But some of the old plans I find in the, in the old Popular Mechanics magazines from 1936, that's what the dimensions are given for most of the projects. They're given in like fractions of an inch. Um, so this is really handy. I think this thing came in with the shipping and everything about 40 bucks. So, and uh, I, I use it all the time. So kind of got distracted there. But I just put it on... Uh, inches, like tenths of an inch, hundreds of an inch. So I go in here, it's a little probe on the end, so you can measure depth very accurately. You can see that. I've got the, a new lens I bought for this camera so you can get in real close. See that? Once I get the depth set, I can come on here, this little knob, and lock it. So that's 0.621. All right. Now I come over here uh, to the vise. I'll show you my little hand dandy ways. I gently put this in the vise because you don't want to crush the wood. Calipers, which have the end, and I just pull the end right on there like that. Then I can hold the saw right against, that's hardened metal. So I hold the saw edge right against that edge. And start my saw curve. Then I know I'm really accurate. Okay, now just take one of my uh, one of my bird wings. I use the same little block here to hold it up. Take a blob of glue, just a little dab to hold it in. A little bit on the dowel. I'm just going to tap that in. Now sometimes the glue will kind of form a hydraulic lock and you really have to hit it the last eighth inch. But then it squeezes out in, you know, around the blade, which is good. It's that much more glue than all the little nooks and crannies. So there's that. It's done. And then I'll just hit this to uh, smooth that off. Sander wheel in here in the rotary tool. And I'll just hit it with that to get it nice and flush. Let's flip it over and repeat. So I, I, I set this little lock here, a little lock thread uh, knob, thumb knob, to lock it at the, at the length I need, so I just do that again. 
I drilled all these holes for all these blades the same depth so I could just cut all these off in a little pile. All these uh, blades that I have here are drilled at exactly the same depth with the uh, with the depth the depth set on, on that drill press. So they're all drilled at the same depth. So I just leave that little tip sticking out there, set with the knob, do them all the same. But since I've got glue uh, already on this one. Going to, have to hurry up and get this in. That's one thing. Once you, once you put the glue on there, don't mess around because that glue gets tacky very quickly, and you get your, your pin, your dowel stuck halfway in. Oh, that'll be a mess. You just happen to have this little piece of aluminum. It makes a nice little dry pin. All right, so that's how you do that. Rinse and repeat for all the rest of your uh, blades. And that's why I like a dowel, it's not hard. And uh, I think it makes them look better and last longer than driving a metal nail in there.